Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, here, uh, we would like to talk about uh, an extension of LHOP Foundation Ontology. Uh, this talk uh, will be given by, the first part will be uh, mainly me, and the second part will be mainly Wes uh, from Merck. So this uh, research uh, has been funded by Merck uh, for uh, one year uh, pilot study to our uh, Michigan, and uh, yeah, I'm basically implementing the work. Uh, this uh, uh, work is uh, on how we can possibly use ontologies uh, to present and analyze uh, process chemistry. So uh, we will introduce the importance of the content, and then we are going to talk about uh, the scope of uh, process chemistry, and then we will survey uh, the existing ontologies and terminologies, and then eventually after we have done all the survey, and we found that maybe it's time to propose an ontology specifically for process chemistry, because uh, such a thing has not uh, uh, existed yet. And then we will introduce how we can uh, develop the so-called ontology of process chemistry, the OPC, our strategy and the methodology, and the upper level and some design patterns. And then Wes will give two use cases. One is the fit and the purge, another one is DOE, the design of experiment. And uh, we are going to also give some uh, our definitions and uh, in the end, we are going to summary uh, and the discussion. So uh, first of all, the project definitely is important, right? Uh, in our process chemistry field, we are going to have a, a lot of uh, analytical data. And meanwhile, we are going to have the synthesis uh, parameters. And then uh, they are, each of them individually, they are not enough, they are not considered as complete data. So we have to merge them in order to make a complete data. But uh, often it's not easy to do, right? And how you can merge, how you can standardize, how you can analyze them. And we do need uh, some language to do so. Okay. And uh, then uh, here uh, we, we show that uh, we have some um, entry level standardization that can be, uh, can be done. Let me see. Uh, yeah, so that can be uh, done using ontology. So for example, in practical, we have different systems, like three systems. And in the end, we want to analyze them together. However, in reality, the different systems, even the label, like it's a simple way to do is like they, they gave with different raw number, uh, uh, like a batch number or a lot, right? So those things are not synthesized. So, or maybe uh, they can be synthesized by link to the, the something ontology uh, ID, uh, but uh, uh, we need to do so, it is simple. So by doing the ontology level uh, standardization, then we can make uh, the tags which are not symmetrically enabled, now become symmetrically enabled. And then we can eventually provide the standardized data, data labels or map to the standard data labels. And then we can also link to the enduring definitions and machine readable semanticals and also have a lot of other uh, semantical applications. So uh, we are thinking about uh, the whole process chemistry life cycle. So typically we think uh, the three major processes, one is uh, round scouting, one is uh, process uh, optimization, one is uh, process maintenance. And under each one, there are many categories. And uh, we here list uh, a few, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We, we, we list a few uh, categories and we think that those things are important for us to do modeling and analyzing. And then uh, with this uh, uh, background, then we see, okay, if there are uh, any ontologies uh, available 
for the uh, process chemical turns. And then we look at uh, uh, OBO foundry. So OBO means uh, open by medical ontology. And uh, so they are all aligned with uh, BFO. So it's a basic formal ontology. So BFO is a top level ontology, uh, which has been now recently accepted as ISO standard. So as ISO uh, top level ontology. And uh, there are over 300 ontologies that have been aligned with BFO. And the AFO also is aligned with buffer, so it's a perfect uh, fit uh, for us to choose those ontologies that are all aligned with buffer. And then we look at the uh, OBO foundry, and you can find that many ontologies, as listed here, many ontologies somehow dealing with uh, process chemistry, like uh, uh, chemical compounds, like uh, chemical methods, um, or organic reaction unit drugs and the proteins. Those somehow related to process chemistry. But however, there's no single uh, integrative uh, comprehensive ontology that uh, is for process chemistry alone, right? So as we see, we have a lot to, to do with chem process chemistry as you see in the previous slides, but uh, there's none in, in OBO to do so. Then we look back into vocabularies and the terminologies. So there are two process chemistry vocabularies uh, which are famous and popular. So one is the Pistoria, uh, formerly Elsevier. They have the unified data models. And then we have ISA ATA. So they are dealing with uh, uh, different parts of the uh, the process chemistry, they provide the uh, vocabularies. Um, and then uh, we have the uh, eligible uh, foundation ontology, so AFO. So AFO covers some results uh, pertinent to process chemistry, and uh, it covers uh, derivation, which uh, uh, parallels organic synthesis. Uh, however, it's not uh, focused on process chemistry, uh, and it's not uh, systematic. There and uh, the vocabularies are not ontology. So and then if we look for the publications, we see some overall uh, publications. They provide some general ideas and uh, maybe some uh, simple demo. But uh, yeah, there is no really uh, ontology yet uh, with a focus on the domain of process chemistry. So overall. Our thorough survey found no complete ontologies that focus on the domain of process chemistry, a major branch of pharmaceutical uh, chemistry. So in the end, uh, we discussed a lot, like uh, Wes and I, we have discussed a lot, and uh, we, we would like to propose uh, something called OPC, which is ontology of process uh, chemistry. So PCO has been taken for another namespace, so we just want to be different, so we call it OPC. So we would like to think it's a new ontology with a focus on the domain of process chemistry. So it will cover the entire timeline from the route scouting to reaction optimization to process maintenance. So we provide some example components of the proposed OPC, uh, including reaction kinetics and the mechanism polymorphism, additional material roles like uh, surfactants, uh, different roles, and then key reaction types like additions, eliminations, etc., and the uh, unit uh, operations such as filtering, refluxing, uh, filings. So some of the terms may come from other ontologies, but we like to put it all together and uh, fill up uh, major gaps. And then the strategy we want to follow is, uh, we call it an uh, extensible ontology development strategy. So basically, uh, it will include a term reuse, alignment, uh, design pattern. So if the terms are already there from existing ontologies, we are going to import. And all the terms together will be aligned together uh, with the buffer. And then for new terms, we are going to design new design patterns, which will be consistent uh, with the community, with AFO, and then we're going to use the design pattern to, to 
to add a new terms. And of course, the community extensibility is important. We are like we want to make it a more like open source and the community build up ontology. And we will follow the OBO Foundry ontology development principles and the uh, uh, Foundation ontology style guide. So eventually we want to use it not only aligned with buffer is up down design, but also bottom up design to analyze different use cases and uh, different specific questions like uh, common operations, basic uh, reaction patterns, and the use cases based on workflow. So here I want to give uh, some more specifics. So this is, is a top-down level design. So Buffalo uh, basically has uh, two major branches. One is uh, continuing the uh, branch, one is uh, a current branch. So continuing branch basically is a time independent entities. So all these are time independent. So a current one is time dependent. So everything is associated with time or process. So you can see uh, many times here, we borrowed from Buffalo or some other ontologies like a uh, CABI for chemical entity. But uh, we also include some new OPC terms uh, like uh, uh, the synthetic chemical process. You have three branches uh, around the scouting process optimization and the process maintenance. And then we are looking for process profiles like a critical process profile in synthetic process, like an example, temperature profile. And then we can look for the quality and the information data, uh, and we can put it all together. Okay, so here is uh, uh, one example. What about a uh, uh, chemical process? Right, so the major one will be the synthetic chemical process. So in our modeling, so it's a process. Uh, and then this process will have specific uh, input, right? The starting material, intermediate material, chemical impurity, and then has output, uh, chemical impurity and the chemical process. They are all material entities. And then, uh, we can also have subclasses of the synthetic uh, chemical process, like a commercial synthetic process. And then we are going to link also those uh, chemical pro products into, it's more like a regulatory, pro regulatory quality, like uh, the critical quality attribute. So all the things will be linked together in a very systematic, uh, systematic way. And then what about uh, uh, unit uh, operation? So this is a simple model here. So again, let's come from the synthetic chemical process. It has a different uh, current part, right? Like a temperature measurement, starting, 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 uh, inserting material. And each of those will have different profiles, like a process profile. And then now we have data. Uh, data will be generated uh, during the whole process. So each profile will have data, like a 2D data of temperature profile, or the 2D data of sterling profile, et cetera. And those data will be somehow now linked with the reality, with the process. So, and we can use the reality, the process ontology to explain the data and put all that together. So yeah, next I will let uh, Wes go through uh, the other cases. Wes? Sure, thanks Oliver. So I'm gonna talk about how we've begun vetting the workflows introduced in the, the scope slide earlier to build the ontology from the bottom up. So after identifying scientific SMEs who are experts in the particular workflow, we asked them to identify key published resources such as review articles and book chapters that give detailed accounts of the workflow. We then parse the terms from these resources, um, typically two to four, um, often simply by just highlighting the terms in the article. Then we survey, survey the existing ontologies and, and vocabularies to see if they've been addressed elsewhere. Um, 
the found terms, we go back um, and uh, get an initial evaluation by the scientific SME and also review them um, semantically to make sure that the definitions are, are rigorous. Since the overall driver for this work is to link the analytical data to its experimental context, we want to make sure that uh, any terms that we develop facilitate this. So any inconsistencies with the AFO or the higher level BFO ontology are flagged to be addressed. Finally, if there is a gap, we build a, a bare bone CMAP of the term and its connection to existing AFO terms uh, based on ADM patterns to facilitate the semantic term definition. We also find that this CMAP, this bare bone CMAP is, is the best representation of the, uh, the formal ontology definition uh, for review by the scientific SMEs. Now we'll briefly look at two examples of how we're gonna do this. Oliver, if you can click to the next slide. So the first use case is a DOE study. For those of you who are not familiar with DOE studies, they're basically boundary testing of important processing parameters to determine the ranges of those parameters that produce a, a quality product. These studies are expected by the regulatory agencies and filings for new drugs, so um, all pharma companies do these. DOE studies in particular are predefined and statistically sound studies to ensure the processing space is adequately covered. Preliminary work includes determining what the key processing parameters are and, and what the important analytical indicators of quality and economics will be. It's different from one variable at a time studies um, because DOE studies deliberately change multiple variables at a time to tease out the interdependencies between the process parameters or factors as they're called in DOE. Factorial designs are often used to do this. Um, a full factorial design is shown in the center bottom there. Um, if you look at the three example factors, it's, it's very reasonable to assume that the reaction temperature and the addition rate could affect the optimal reaction time. Um, and a high, uh, a hypothetical response then is shown on the right that, that shows this dependency. Typically multiple response curves must be examined to define the design space or the safe operating zone of the process. Um, examples could be overall purity, levels of individual impurities, or process yield. Um, they are often defined in the AFO or tied directly to analytical terms in the AFO. Next slide, please. So as an example here, we'll use the, the concept of design experiment itself. Um, we, didn't, we didn't find um, that defined in any of the, the BFO aligned ontologies. So a simple CMAP is drawn, um, showing how the new term is related to other terms, its place in the taxonomy is determined, how it's distinguished from its sibling uh, classes, and then the key relationships to other concepts form the, the ontology. So in this case, the design of experiment is a planned process um, that have factors as inputs and a design space as output. We don't show it here, but the individual response curves are also outputs of the DOE. And those response curves connect directly to the analytical data modeled by the AFO. Next slide. The second exemplary workflow is a fate and purge study. As the name implies, a fate and purge study determines the fate of an impurity in a synthetic process. Uh, again, these studies are expected by the regulatory agencies. As an example, we look at the crystallization process on the lower left. The material input to the process contains a certain level of impurities. The crystallization is then used to obtain a purity upgrade by prefer preferentially uh, precipitating the desired product as a crystalline solid leaving the bulk of the impurity in the supernatant solution. In the center, we represent um, that the, the determination of the total amount of impurity in the waste and product streams is complicated by the fact that the impurity itself can be altered by the process. So you have to account for all the degradants of the impurity as well. Quantitation of the impurity and its degradant are, are directly addressed by the, by the AFO. Finally, in the bottom right, um, multi-step -proce multi processes further complicate things as impurities um, and or their degradants can persist through multiple steps, if not the whole process. Uh, these branched and bifurcated processes are easily modeled um, using graph technology. 
Uh, next slide, please. So here are four example terms from the fate and purge example uh, workflow. As an example, we're just going to uh, look at the definition of the purge factor term. Uh, Again, we didn't find this term in any of the BFO ontologies, so we make a small CMAP representation of the of the definition that the chemist gave us. Um, it's then encoded into you know a machine readable definition. And here, uh, Protege, uh, which is an ontology visualization tool, it's is showing the machine readable definition um, that was developed for the purge factor, and it's it's a process property that describes the fraction of an impurity in the waste stream um, over the amount remaining in the processing stream. Um, so next slide, please. So although the goal of this work is to, is, is to develop a process chemistry ontology, not to necessarily uh, model all of the process chemistry workflows, we did want to make sure that the ontology was detailed enough to support representing our process data in a cloud graph environment. So we did a, a pressure test based on um, reaction kinetics. Uh, so we, we basically attempted to model a series of experiments, um, and this is a, a portion of that. Um, the terms that we developed as part of the, the initial vetting process, um, they were, uh, we did find them to be enough to uh, express the experiments and the results. Uh, the rate equation and its components um, are all expressible using existing BFO, AFO terms, um, as well as the new ontology terms. Again, this is only a small portion of it, but um, we also modeled all of the links from the 2D data profiles that you would collect to get uh, kinetics data uh, back to the original data represented by the AFO. Okay, and then um, with that, I'll turn the presentation back to Oliver. Okay, thank you, Les, uh, for the introduction of the cases and the pressure test. So now we want to summary. We want to summarize the work. So we have done a thorough survey on the process uh, chemistry ontology. We notice its importance, but however, there is uh, no uh, comprehensive ontology on it. So we propose uh, to develop uh, the so-called OPC and then to uh, focus on the process chemistry. And we also presented our developmental strategy, the methods, and we provided our up level design and uh, design pattern. And then we have uh, uh, two use cases and a pressure test uh, presented. So, uh, and uh, we wanna see uh, OBC uh, has maintained its uh, interoperability with the eligible uh, foundation ontologies. And, and it's natural, right? Because we all aligned with the BFO. And uh, the whole OPC development just began. Uh, it's, uh, we, we spent a lot of things we presented, but the uh, testing cases uh, have just started. So we welcome uh, others who are interested to participate. So we like to discuss a, a couple of things. Uh, one major one is uh, the status of uh, OPC. So the ontology of chemi chemistry uh, or process chemistry as OPC. So will it be a standalone ontology or can it become part of the existing uh, AFO? Or the third option is like it can be both, it can be a relatively independent standalone ontology, but meanwhile, it can become part of the AFO. So this, uh, uh, yeah, definitely these options, uh, yeah, we would like to to discuss uh, with the uh, Earlchop Foundation. And also we, for sure, we like to incorporate uh, uh, into AFO somehow and uh, uh, and um, the, uh, the thing is uh, uh, the restriction, right? I mean, so if it can be, if it will become part of AFO, it will be subject to governance and requiring permission resources. And a lot of things are there. So and if we stand alone, it will be relatively independent, but maybe it can be both. But anyway, just some discussion to, to, to come, yeah. 
So overall, thank you very much. And uh, we do like to acknowledge uh, uh, the financial support from Merck to the University of Michigan for this cooperation. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to work on this with uh, the wonderful uh, foundation and, and the Merck people and especially Wes. Thank you.